So we have made it to Slovenia and what a greeting we've had. We have come to probably the most famous small church photo in all of Slovenia. There's like two super famous ones and then there's like Bled with the church in a lake. But I do think I prefer this one and what a start it has been. So as you can see over here, we have a beautiful viewpoint low clouds in the valleys. It has been raining a monsoon this evening. Just when we arrived, I did have some clouds around the church right here, hoping for it still that they will come around. We just had like the light come out. It looked ridiculous throwing light, a big light beam in behind the church also. As you can see, there is quite a lot of space to stand on up here and plenty of other photographers also it is one of the more famous places in slovenia to take photos and for a good reason so besides the church shot that is here that is the most obvious is of course to photograph on all the different mountains there's so much atmosphere this morning it looks phenomenal and you can just pick out compositions in the mountains. I think I've already got like all in all three photos from here that I really really like. So yeah, <laughs> this is like... Wow! Settings wise, super simple. I have the long lens on. Right now I'm almost out at 200 millimeter, but it's still quite a wide shot. So you definitely want to have a lens that goes from 50 to 400 millimeter, just like I do. <laughs> and ISO 100 right now it gives me a shutter speed of a quarter of a second and yeah it's very simple. So far so good. Slovenia delivers on the first morning already. Here's some photos. Hi guys, I'm just jumping in here to inform you that there's right now a huge $100 off discount on my big landscape photography editing course, Photoshop for Landscape Photographers. The coupon code and the link is down in the description of the video. This is all because of the Black Friday season that we're in right now. This is the biggest sale I ever give on my Photoshop for Landscape Photographers course. And I can see that there's a lot of you who have probably waited for it because my sales throughout November has been going down. So let's just kick it off. Link is down in the description of the video and I'll tell you a little bit more about it later in this video. But uh, let's return to Slovenia for now. So we have now come to a little cabin on a mountainside with beautiful big mountains here in the background. It's such an idyllic little scene. We actually have been here before, just the other day scouting it, but the weather was completely different. 
So the other day we had like low clouds, which also looked very, very nice because it gave quite a lot of like interest to the background mountains. And we had like very wispy clouds. We couldn't see the top of the mountains, but it was a scene that I actually quite like. And as you can see in these time lapses, the clouds were just stunning in combination with a few local clouds on this side of the mountains. And of course the autumn colors. It is a scene I quite like. And actually on the way back to where we were staying, we were driving along the road and I stopped over and also photographed some of these low clouds along the mountain sides that really made the layers of the mountains and the trees pop. And in between there were also some autumn color trees among also the green trees. Beautiful and idyllic scenes. So in these cases, it was simply just a question about like pointing the camera towards the mountain walls and wait for the clouds to carve out the mountains and see if you could find patterns in those surroundings. And if you want to learn more about how I compose these photos, be sure to get my two ebooks. They teach you everything I know about composition in landscape photography. They're super easy to read with minimal text and loads of photos as examples. There are links to both of them down in the description of the video. So we have returned to this cabin and it is a gorgeous little scene. Today we have a few clouds in the sky. I'm crossing my fingers that they will stay there to sunset because that's the reason why we're here is to photograph sunset. Right now the light is still quite harsh. However, we've just had a good amount of light here on the opposite mountains. We also have light here in the foreground and that is also like along the cabin right here. So it really pops a little bit more. We also had some of these cows over here walk here in the foreground that also adds quite a lot to this particular photo. I'm not so sure about this section here. There's quite a lot of dead space, but I can't really avoid it when I compose the photo. So you can see it right there. But with the flare from the sun coming in here from upper right and the mountains and some clouds up here in the sky, I actually think the first photo here, even though it's relatively harsh light, actually works really well. As the sun set, the light changed and I actually managed to get some lighting that benefited the foreground really, really nicely. So we have taken a lift up to the top of a mountain next to the lake Bohinj. Bohin? Bohin. I'm, I'm definitely going to butcher all Slovenian words, that's for sure. I'm sorry about that. But it is actually a surprisingly beautiful viewpoint, especially here with the autumn colors. Like I honestly did not think a whole lot of it, but we have the most beautiful, beautiful dabble light down in the valley. So just look here, dabble light right here. And now the sun is also hitting and creating like a line right here on this foreground trees here. And also before we had dabble light here. So. The clouds are moving very, very fast and it just gives the most spectacular light show that just carves out the mountains. So this here is actually a recce mission for doing a workshop here next year along with Sam. So I'm here with my sister and she's just like running around exploring and Sam is here with his girlfriend and they are also having a lot of fun. So it is actually a really nice trip just to chill and explore the area and see what works for photography and what doesn't. And I would definitely say that if you can get this dabble light on a day like this, this place up here looks really, really beautiful. So for photographing up here, I'm basically just hand holding my 28 to 200 millimeter and just picking out details down there in the valley. And because of the dabble light, the photos almost become like abstract and then in combination with the mountains and the dynamic landscapes in the mountains and in combination with the shadows and the foregrounds and the awesome colors 
it looks beautiful. So we have come up to the top of a hill slash mountain and I'm photographing out over Kranj where we are staying and the view is just phenomenal. So what I'm photographing is a church that's standing like right there. And as you can see we still have like the last of some morning fog. We've been in another place to photograph sunrise this morning and we've come back to the town and I saw that we had still some morning mist. We've been up here to this location a few times and the first time there was way too much fog. It was just scouting to see if we could get up here. Second time was in the middle of the day just to see if I could actually get the shot, which I could. And now we have <laughs> close to the conditions that I would want. More atmospheric conditions, more interesting conditions. So as mentioned, I'm photographing down here and I'm just filming it with a long lens so you can see what I'm actually Doing. So you can definitely see that one lone church standing out. Of course we have the power lines which are not super interesting but I don't know it gives some kind of like juxtaposition between the old church and then the new modern industry. And then we have the morning mist, all the lines in all the fields and then of course that bank of low clouds there in the background that just looks so gorgeous and everything is of course backlit which just adds so much beauty to it. So this specific photo was one I found before I actually went down here and it's really cool to go there and get it yourself and uh, yeah let me know down in the comments whether you like this photo or not. I like that juxtaposition but I think the romantic part of me would have preferred it without the power lines but uh, it is what it is. If you struggle with how to edit your photos, be sure to enroll in my big Photoshop for Landscape Photographers post-processing course. It is here where I share my philosophy and all my many, many techniques on how I edit my photos. The course is very well organized. First, I give you an introduction to the programs. Then I share all my different individual techniques and then I apply them to 11 different start to finish tutorials and I've added even more small videos in there just to fill out potential gaps. There is a link and a coupon code down in the description of the video to save a little bit of money. So as mentioned, this trip was also a recommendation to make a potential workshop next year. However, as with most personal photo trips, it was fairly long, so I could return to many of the different locations that we wanted to visit. So we also returned to the first location that I showed in this video, and we got an absolutely stunning sunrise.
I hope you enjoyed this week's video. In the next one, we will visit even more amazing locations. And if you want to learn even more, be sure to benefit from the coupon code down in the description of the video for the Photoshop course and get my two ebooks if you want to learn more about composition. See you next time.